Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're gathered for a very happy occasion this evening to award Stellenbosch University's Pro Bene Meritu Award to the Honorable Ed Royce. This is an award which recognizes an exceptional and sustained contribution over many years to the common good, especially on our continent. And you will hear in a few minutes why we have decided to recognize our, este our esteemed guest in this manner. But first, a few words of introduction about Mr. Royce. He is member of the United States, States House of Representative, uh, Representatives since 1993 and currently chairs the House Foreign Affairs Committee. As the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Congressman Ed Royce is a leader in the global cause to advance human rights, free and fair elections, transparency, and economic development. And as a former chairman of, this, of the African Subcommittee, Chairman Royce is proud to have strengthened cooperation between the United States and African countries throughout his time in Congress, including by leading several delegations to South Africa. In 1997, his delegation to South Africa met with President Mandela and other top officials. Chairman Royce has been at the forefront of efforts to strengthen Africa's economies. He co-authored the recently enacted BUILD Act, which will help reduce poverty in emerging markets by improving U.S. development finance. He's also the co-author of, Af of the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA, a trade initiative that became law in the year 2000 and has since substantially increased U.S.-Africa trade. Under AGOA, South Africa is able to export autos, agricultural products, and many other goods tariff-free into the United States. He was born and bred in California, graduated from high school in Anaheim, California, and then the highly regarded California State University at Fullerton, where he studied at Fullerton's, business school, uh, Fullerton's School of Business Administration. If I look at his policy positions, he must have picked up a lot of economics along the way. I am reminded of Lord Acton's observation in his lectures on modern history, where Acton observed that in the run-up to the American Revolution, the reason why free trade is better than dominion, Acton said, was a secret buried in the breast of economists. But not so deep that Chairman Royce could not find it. He evidently realized that international trade offered opportunities, not just for the undoubted and very substantial gains in efficiency, but also for a collaborative partnership that affects both sides and encourages good governance and the evolution of political systems that would support the long-run prosperity of African nations. Market collaboration can have profoundly positive spillovers. In 2015, Ed Royce introduced the Electricity uh, Electrify Africa Act, which is now law and helps provide people in sub-Saharan Africa with access to electricity so that they can live with refrigeration, life-saving medical treatments, machines to produce goods and modern technologies. By helping to electri electrify Africa, this legislation removes one of the biggest barriers to economic growth on the continent, creating trade opportunities and jobs in Africa and in the United States. More recently, Chairman Royce authored the Women's Economic Empowerment Act that, as part of his work to empower women and girls through U.S. foreign policy. That is, this legislation, which passed the House earlier this year, seeks to reduce barriers to women's economic participation in developing countries, with the potential to add tens of billions to the global economy. Chairman Royce has also focused on combating wildlife trafficking, which he sees as both a moral imperative and a security and development priority. To help combat the threat posed by terrorists, rebels and criminals who used wildlife trafficking as a source of funding, Mr. Royce continues to work towards conserving some of the world's most endangered animals and landscapes. He authored the End Wildlife Tra Trafficking Act to help combat unprecedented levels of poaching and is championing legislation to help conserve the Okavango River Basin, home to the largest remaining elephant population on our continent. Now serving his 12th term in Congress, Chairman Royce represents Southern California's 39th district, which includes parts of Orange, uh, Orange County, Los Angeles, and, the San, and San Bernardino. He and his wife, Mary, uh, Assistant Secretary of State for Education and Cultural Affairs, are longtime residents of Orange County. It now gives me great pleasure to invite the Honorable Ed Royce to address us this evening. 
Let me uh, just begin by um, concurring with Professor Stan Duplessy on his observations on liberalization of trade uh, and to concur with you that uh, the ascent of opportunities for human beings throughout the long course of human history has, uh, has marched almost in step with times when trade has been liberalized, as, as economists also say, when, when trade crosses borders, armies don't. But on the other hand, the opposite is also true. Uh, at times when we're not engaged in beneficial trade, uh, there are other side effects, consequences. And I think for all of us here, the realization that over the last few decades, billions of human beings have been lifted out of poverty by liberalization of trade. Uh, and I, uh, I also want to uh, thank Dr. Ronel Retief for uh, um, introducing me here around to the, uh, to the faculty and uh, for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Um, I, uh, I thank the faculty. Uh, I thank all of you for this opportunity, uh, for this dialogue we will have uh, here in the heart of wine country, which uh, as a, uh, a native Californian, I've got to tell you, I feel right at home in the climate here. <laughs> um, I, I'd also like to thank uh, Council General Vir Virginia Blazer for her dedicated service uh, here uh, in Africa, especially at this post. And I would mention to you um, that uh, this is, yes, this is my fourth time here. Uh, my first visit was in 1997. Our delegation was honored to meet with President Mandela, one of the great statesmen. And on that trip, uh, Whitey Basson hosted us uh, up at uh, ShopRite Checkers. Uh, we had a large delegation that I brought. And he presented a hugely inspiring vision of his, his company, uh, his country, uh, and the continent. And I was hooked. Um, and that's why I'm so honored to receive this award. For more than 20 years now, building US-Africa relations has been a top priority of mine. It's also been a top priority of Tom Sheehy here in the front row, our director, uh, well, you know, staff director in the committee, and for work who got you, who's with us as well. Um, as a member of Congress and the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, I have traveled extensively, not just here, but across Africa. And wherever I go, I'm struck by the tremendous potential and vibrancy of the economies and the opportunity. The young people I meet here are some of the best and brightest and have an incredible vision for their own communities, for what they want to see happen in Africa. And despite all the challenges, this continent is full of optimism. You see that optimism in them. You see the, 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 their optimism as your students. I'm proud to say that the US Congress uh, has developed an attitude about Africa. We've worked hard on this over the years and we have a strong majority of Democrats and Republicans that share that optimism with you. This has allowed us to work in a bipartisan way to advance key initiatives to build strong partnerships between the United States and economies here across Africa. These initiatives, as mentioned, I'm going to just stress what I think is important about them. But the, the African Growth and Opportunity Act, I think South Africa has benefited the most of the countries that have been engaged. And since the passage in 2000, we've had an opportunity to update this periodically in order to strengthen it, or in order to find new ways to assist on capacity building. Uh, bef because of um, AGOA, uh, if we go back to 2000 and, and look today at just one industry, the wine industry, it's the fifth largest market for South African wine. And you've had a five-fold increase in terms of sales into the United States. I think that um, PEPFAR 
is another issue that, as you know, we've had many delegations come through uh, across Sub-Saharan Africa to work with the health communities here. Um, I think that that work has saved countless lives and has stemmed the tide of HIV infection that threatened to wipe out a generation of young people in Africa. I think Electrify Africa, which is driving new growth and improving the lives of millions in sub-Saharan Africa, reduces the reliance on charcoal, reduces the alliance on wood, reduces the alliance on a lot of toxic fuels, and helps so much in terms of driving the capacity, uh, not just for economies, but also for students to study for hospitals. I think the End Wildlife Trafficking Act comes in the nick of time. The effort, the effort to stop the uh, extermination of these species, of rhino and, and elephant, <clears throat> really allows us not just to ban the ivory trade, but to leverage our resources to help African countries conserve that majestic and unique habitat that provide these economic opportunities to so many people in Africa. And I think you're well aware that over the last five years, you've had 50,000 new jobs here just created in tourism, and you've seen the increase in tourism, obviously not just from the United States, but Europe and Asia. And just recently, we have the BUILD Act. Uh, and the BUILD Act, for those of us that have been involved in, in trying to build capacity, it will more than double Africa's uh, ability to receive this commitment from the United States to financing private sector development in Africa and in other parts of the world. These initiatives are especially important at a time when we're seeing increasing investment in Africa from the international community. Not only the typical Western partners, but China, the Gulf countries, and Russia. Don't get me wrong, I welcome increased investment in this continent. It is very beneficial. I recognize that the U.S. must compete for your business. I strongly believe the U.S. must lead in providing an alternative lending option that is equitable, that is mutually beneficial, that does not saddle developing countries with crippling debt. And that's why this model is so appealing. Africans I talk to prefer the U.S. emphasis on promoting democratic values, respect for human rights, transparent business practices, and quality products. And that's why I'm glad the BUILD Act will renew and strengthen our approach to financing private sector-led development. The new U.S. International Development Finance Corporation is going to provide $60 billion in loans, in guarantees, in equity uh, capital to businesses, to businesses in emerging markets here for projects that support economic development. So as I prepare to pass on this uh, chairman's gavel, and we have term limits in the U.S. for committee chairman, um, like so many of you, I am optimistic about the future. This is a continent with incredible potential. This continent will shape the world of tomorrow. Thankfully for the U.S., we have champions on both sides of the aisle and both political parties that will continue to advocate for priorities like AGOA, for free trade, for good governance, and conservation in Congress. And I am confident the U.S. will continue to be a strong partner for both South Africa and the continent. Our future, in part, depends on this. And I thank you again for your warm welcome. And I thank you especially for this special honor. It means a great deal to me. And I look forward to our panel discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Stellenbosch University only awards its Pro Bene Merito Award, which comes in the form of a medal and certificate in very special circumstances for exceptional service which could be at a local or international level. Service could include many things, academic relations, creating study and research opportunities, and promoting Stellenbosch University's interests in the global academic and research community. Stellenbosch University is purposefully developing its footprint on the African continent. It is evident in the many projects, partnerships and collaborations with our fellow African institutions and our participation in the Association of African Universities. In that respect, we share Edward Royce's belief that Africa matters. Let me now, again, introduce the man of the moment. I'll be repeating some of what has already been said, but it certainly won't hurt to reflect on Edward Royce's contributions yet again. Edward Randall Royce is an American politician, having served as a member of the United States House of Representatives for California's 39th Congressional District since 1993. He served as chairman of the Subcommittee on Terrorism, Non-Proliferation and Trade, and he is a very effective lawmaker. Since 2013, he has been chairman of the United States House Committee on Foreign Affairs and takes a very serious, supportive and political interest in Africa. We've heard that Ed Royce is an original sponsor of AGOA, a United States Trade Act enacted on the 18th of May 2000 to encourage investment in African export sectors by opening the US market to products grown or manufactured in Africa. Royce led the 10-year renewal of AGOA and it has since been renewed to 2025. The legislation significantly enhances market access to the US for qualifying sub-Saharan African countries. Qualification for AGOA preferences is based on a set of conditions contained in the AGOA legislation. In order to qualify and remain eligible for AGOA, each country must be working to improve its rule of law, human rights, and respect for core labor standards, values that Stellenbosch University also supports. Royce rallied Republicans to fund the two African initiatives of the George W. Bush presidency, PEPFAR, and the Millennium Challenge Corporation. The latter embody, embodies Royce's commitment to promoting the rule of law in Africa and has changed collective thinking on development spending. Royce has been a force for good in his commitment to ending the war in Liberia and Sierra Leone. He joined then Assistant Secretary of State for Africa, Susan Rice, in hounding Charles Taylor until his arrest in 2006. He focused attention both on Taylor's crimes and the U.S. special relationship with Liberia. His work on ending the civil wars in Sierra Leone and Liberia gave momentum to the Kimberley process and containment of the illicit diamond trade. Royce co-led an International Republican Institute election observer team to Nigeria, where he and Colin Powell cautioned the country's powerful military to respect the results of the election. Nigeria now enjoys a democracy despite some political problems. Royce has announced that he will not be seeking re-election in November. I was meant to say this will mean the loss of a respected voice in Washington, but as Tony Carroll just pointed out, it will be the loss of a vote and not the loss of a voice. While the current political tide puts an inward-looking growth agenda ahead of concerns for global environment, well, um, Royce and colleagues will now be studying how the U.S. can best help combat poaching and conserve natural treasures such as the Okavango Delta. The fight against wildlife trafficking is one of Royce's passions. He introduced anti-poaching and illicit trade of African wildlife legislation and steered it into law in 2016. Even though he had little to gain politically in Orange County from caring about Africa, Royce has been relentless in seeking to convince his fellow members of Congress that Africa matters. In light of the above, ladies and gentlemen, 
I would like to request Prof. Stan Duplessis to award on behalf of Stellenbosch University its prestigious Pro Bene Meritum Medal to Edward Randall Royce for his promotion of the economic and political interests of Africa through PEPFAR and the Millennium Challenge Corporation, and most importantly, the African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA. Thank you.